Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about why so many of your employees mess up their pension calculation, including when you get an agency pension estimate or annuity estimate. There's always mistakes that I see. We're going to dive into that, how you can make sure you know exactly what you're going to get from your pension and to check your agency estimate as well. So let's dive right in. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dallin Haas. I'm a financial planner who serves federal employees and I absolutely love it. Okay, so long story short, there's two ways that federal employees mess up their pensions. There is the front side and then there's the back side, okay? So on the front side, there are three things that you want to make sure you have right. You got to have, of course, your high three, okay? Your high three, you got your years of service, okay? And then your multiplier, okay? Now, high three. Your high three is, of course, the, the salary you got paid, the average salary during the three years of your career you got paid the most. So as a very simple example, if the highest paid years of your career, um, you got paid this, okay? 95,000 one year, 100,105. The average of all of those is 100,000. So in that case, the high three would be $100,000. But these have to be consecutive years. So make sure that your high three is that, okay? And this does not have to be the last three years of your career, but it certainly could be. So when you're looking at, let's say, your, your HR's annuity estimate or pension estimate, Look at the high three they're assuming. I've seen so many times that that um, they assume a high three that's simply probably not going to be right, right? It's probably going to be too high or too low. You want to make sure you understand how that works. Now, um, next is, of course, the years of service part. And this sounds simple, right? Yeah, it's just years of service, right? Everyone knows how many years of service they have, but it gets a little messy. What counts, right? For example, temporary time as a federal employee does not count for the vast majority of federal employees it does not count as federal service and if you bought back military time that does count right um, so long story short one of the biggest mistakes i see is that federal employees especially if you've moved around to a bunch of positions a bunch of different agencies or if you have military time you bought back or, or if you got a bunch of weird time like that it is unfortunately common enough where your agency doesn't have record of all of those. So when they run the estimate, they're missing some of your service, right? Maybe they never got those records or maybe it's just in a different spot, right? You wanna make sure your HR has record of all of your service. And if you're assuming one thing, but they show something else, there's a problem, okay? You wanna make sure that that is correct. Your years of service is correct. And just so you know, unused sick leave will actually add into your years of service at retirement. So that'll increase your years of service as well. Now, your multiplier is one of three things. Number one, if you're just a normal federal employee, normal first federal employee, your multiplier is 1%. That's the default, okay? If you have, if you're age 62 with at least 20 years of service at retirement, it goes to 1.1%, okay, 10% higher. Now, if you're a special provisions federal employee, you know your multiplier for the first seven, or the first 20 years is actually 1.7. For every year after that, it is 1%, okay? Again, this is for special provisions only. Firefighters, air traffic controls, you know who you are, okay? So now that we have a rough idea of what goes into the pension, let's go over a quick example of how that is calculated, okay? How it's calculated. So, and honestly, how most federal employees mess up their pension is not this side. We're about to get to the, the back side where most mistakes actually happen. So let's do an example. Let's say someone's high three is a hundred grand, okay? A hundred grand, let's say they have 30 years of service and their multiplier is 1%, okay? That is how your pension is calculated. High three multiplied by years of service, multiplied by the multiplier. So in this example, we get $30,000, okay? And that's per year, per year. So this federal employee get $30,000 per year from their pension. Now, pensions are paid on a monthly basis. So to get a monthly basis, you divide that by 12. You divide it by 12. Now, this is the part that most federal employees actually mess up. Now, there's lots of mistakes here all the time, but again, the most common mistakes are up here, what I'm about to dive into. Long story short, long story short, every pension has a lot of deductions that come out. For example, 
let's say right now your gross salary is 100k let's say do you actually receive 100k in your bank account every single year no not even close what you actually net after taxes after saving into tsp after health insurance after social security after all those deductions you net a way smaller amount the same is unfortunately true for your pension there's a lot of things you have to pay for um first you got to pay for survivor benefits if you're married okay if you're married and you want a piece of your pension to basically outlive you right and go to your spouse if you die first then it's going to cost you it costs money and there's a few options number one if you want your spouse to be left with 50 percent five zero 50% of your pension, it's gonna cost you 10% of your pension while you're both alive. If you want your spouse to be left with, again, that's 50%, five zero. If you want your spouse to be left with um, 25%, okay, then it's gonna cost you 5% of your pension when you're both alive. So if, again, if you want your pension to last beyond your own lifetime, it's gonna cost you either 10% or 5% depending on how much you want to leave okay so you want to put that in immediately right take that out of your pension immediately so if your pension is three thousand dollars a month then three three hundred dollars would come out every single month to pay for this survivor benefit now if you're single though this is not a factor for you, you don't have to worry about it the next things that would come out would be your insurances are you keeping your health insurance are you keeping life insurance what about dental and vision do you have long-term care you'd have to pay for these insurances in out of your pension in retirement okay and last but not least is taxes okay taxes your pension is taxed on the federal level okay and it may be taxed on the state level depending on where you live as well and this is one of the biggest mistakes i see all the time especially on pension estimates from hrs is their assumption for taxes is almost a hundred percent of the time way too low okay way too low where you want to and i don't know what tax bracket all of you are in i have honestly no clue right it varies a lot depending on your other income sources but again just know if you're looking at a pension annuity estimate that their number may not be the most accurate okay um you you're probably going to want to run your own tax numbers to see what it was probably going to be like for you okay so long story short there's two ways to mess up your pension on the front side when you're calculating it right to get to these numbers your high three years of service and multiplier right you want to make sure you get those right and then there's the back end of all the deductions okay so if you're running your own numbers make sure these are all right if you're looking at a pension estimate from your hr again they don't do it perfect all the time most of the time there's some mistakes at least certainly on the tax estimate there's always something that you want to make sure is right you want to make sure they have all your years of service in there so that they're actually giving you a proper estimate if your hr doesn't have the, all the paperwork for your career there's going to be problems when you try to retire and opm again is going to be slowed down immensely if things aren't in order so now's the time check your records check your pension make sure you understand what it's going to be and i hope that's helpful I'll see you guys in a future video.